All right, folks, have a seat and we'll go again. We start planting tomatoes February the 5th. We plant them in a high tunnel with no heat. I'll show you how to take tomato plants through 16 degree weather and not lose any of them, okay? Without any heat now. We're not gonna use a heater. Too expensive to use heat. Well anyway, first thing we're gonna show you is how to build these containers then. There's a couple different ways you can do this. This is actually the, actually the first seven years ago I started doing it like this. You drill one hole, if you use six inch pipe, you're gonna drill your hole five inches up. So you have five inches of water and one inch of air on top of those pipe. This is the secret to keep this plant from drowning is this little bit of air in top of these two pipes. I promise you. If you take these pipes out, throw them away and fill it full of soil, and fill it, put water in there five inches deep, I promise you it will drown your plant. Okay? So don't do that. Okay, two years ago I taught a class and the gentleman bought 30 buckets off of me. He was excited and went home to do it. He called me after the season. He said, Leon, your bucket system doesn't work. I said, bring your buckets. He wanted his money back. And I said, bring them back and I'll give you money back. This is what he did to his buckets. <laughs> and he put garden soil in them instead of compost or potting soil. He did exactly what I told him not to, but anyway, he wasn't happy in, so I'll give his money back. But don't dr just drill one hole in these is all you drill. None in the bottom, because we want to hold five inches of water. This is going to make your life a lot easier, okay? After we put the pipe in there, then we take a piece of ground cover. Now this is commercial ground cover. Lasts you about 25 years. If you go to the box store, and I have nothing against box stores, you're going to buy their ground cover and it'll last you about one year. Okay? This is going to cost you 10 cents a square foot. So this is a 3 by 4, that's 12 times 10, dollar and 20 cents for this cloth for 25 years. So that's about not much money a, a year. Okay? You're going to put this cloth in there and you're going, to put, you're going to push it down on the sides and put potting soil down in here and down in there, okay? And that's going to be your wicks to wick this water up to your plants, okay? You can pour water in, the, in this. We cut it on the, on the bevel, put it down there so when you put water in there, it'll get out faster. If you cut it flat, see, it'll sit on the bottom and water won't come out. So we just cut it on an angle, sit down like that, and water will gush out and fill this up. And when the water comes out the hole on the side, you know it's full of water. You're right here. You can water through this here, you can put it over here. The only reason we put it in there because if you're putting one plant, like a tomato plant in the middle, and if you water here, the weed seeds will come up. Richard, would you show them the bucket that set out and then they take and get it over there? Hold it up so they can see, please. But if you water in this pipe right here, and you keep this water down here and let it wick up in the bottom, the top inch or so of this soil will stay dry and your seeds won't germinate. Now the person that was talking about planting seeds in these buckets, you do have to do a little watering on top to get your seeds started because it's a little dry on top. Okay, there's these buckets right there that we didn't maintain. The seeds are just naturally going to blow in it and come up in it. And what we did, we also come up with a little deal that you can put on the top of it. You can see this around this pepper plant in the blue bucket. And please don't touch them peppers. They're hot. That's those ghost peppers. You'll go home burning with you wipe your nose, it'll burn. And if you scratch your ear, it'll burn. But we've made these now to put on the top to keep the weeds from growing. And we put a tomato plant right in the middle. So we can just put this right over here like into this and maintain this down in there. Of course, we use things to cut down, you know, but put it in there. And that you can look around the bottom of that pepper plant in the blue bucket. It's got one of these that keeps the weeds from growing. Okay, another way to do it. I went up to school the other day delivering watermelons and I saw these sitting out behind the house, a schoolhouse and I said, what are you going to do with them buckets? We're going to put them in the trash. If you want them, get them. And so we brought home some just to play with to show you what you can do. These are the buckets they cut out of the vegetables out of, okay? Six of them comes in the case. We, we punched one hole. They already cut the top out of them and got the vegetables out of them. Then we punched a hole in here, turned them upside down in there. We use six of them in there, just like into that right there. 
I can't tell you how many years that'll last. I think it'll last four or five years before it rusts out. But while it's rusting, it's going to be putting iron into your soil too. Then we're going to take the same so same piece of, cl of uh, cloth, we're going to lay it over there, and we're going to punch it in that middle, right down in there, and we're going to put potting soil in there, and that's going to be your wick sucking up through there. Where the wick's on the outside here, the wick's in the middle here. Okay. Another way to do this, you take this bucket here, you can buy these at a box store, you can buy it at uh, McDonald's or anywhere they have these, they get food in. They charge you anywhere a dollar, two dollars. Take one of these, take a little bucket that a mom come out of or a plant of some kind in the spring, that's a two gallon. That just fits right in that bucket pretty well if you can sit right in the middle and give you a little wicking all the way around the outside edge. Okay? We're going to take a little cloth that I cut about, these are I think 14 inches square. I've got some here to round, I think I've used them. But anyway, we're going to put that right down in there and let push it down in there and put soil all the way down in around this bucket down in there. And that's going to be a wick to wick the water back up to a plant, okay? It's going to be five inches of water. We're going to drill it five inches up. So you've got five inches of water and about two inches of air. This works on the same system this one does, just a smaller container. This is a chive that we put in there in, Jan in uh, June and we water it about once a week. That's a bee bomb on the other end the same way. Got a little bucket upside down in there in the soil and that's what it does. You just and every time you water, put a teaspoon of fertilizer. If you use milk or grow, if you use the nature source that we use, whatever, you put a teaspoon of that in a gallon of water every time you water that. That way, because that plant wants to eat every day you eat, which is every day. So if you fix this up with the water and the food and the air, it sits here and eats 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you don't have to feed it, but just once a week. As it gets older, bigger, we have to feed these twice a week. This is in the same containers, right here. Okay, this is a bottle that's been cut half in two. Okay? We did this with the Chickasaws here in Ardmore in behind their hospital down here. They had I had a bunch of these tubs cut like this, and they had holes drilled in the bottom like the orange bucket, but they couldn't keep their plants alive in it. And so they asked me what they, I could do about it. So I went in there and I laid plastic in their tub to seal off their holes. I cut them a piece of pipe, just as long as the barrel, and put it in there, and I drilled one hole five inches up. Now then, we have Water holding up here in five inches deep, one inch of air, and then their soil's up here. And they said their plants are doing much, much better. Now, we take a piece of cloth like into this and put over this so that we're trying to keep the soil now out of the pipe because we want it to hold water. And that's what it, we do it right there and fill this full of potting soil. And this is going to have five inches of water and one inch of air on the top of it. So, yeah, you can cut them this way. You can cut them crossways and do them just like I did over there, and these buckets will last you 20 or 25 years. The soil we're using is BM7. You can use Milk or Grow, the Sustain. I don't think I talked to y'all about fertilizing this, did I, or did I? I don't think I did, did I? This is Sustain. This is chicken manure, turkey feathers, composted. Looks like little mice peels is what it looks like. But it's composted chicken manure and turkey feathers. We put a half a cup of this in the top of each bucket. Then we take the sea mineral. This is nothing but salt water out of Australia that's been evaporated and it looks just like salt is what it looks like, okay? We put a fourth of a cup of this and there's a, there's a paper over telling you how to use this if you want to use. This is a 464 nitrogen, superphosphate, and potash, okay? That's the three fertilizers in any 10, 20, 10, triple 20, anything you get, miracle Grow, it's gonna have those three numbers on it. So, it just comes in different ratios. Some plants like more nitrogen. If you want blooms, you use the high center number. If you wanna grow foliage, you use the first number. Potash on the bottom, with the last one, it'll grow roots, uh, stabilizes the plant and so forth. This sea mineral has 90 
different trace minerals in it. This is your micronutrients. Not the, not the major three that you have in fertilizer. This is your micronutrients. That's 90 something different ones of them. Our tomatoes that we grow in these containers and we use this on them, the tomatoes do not rot. We can let them hang on the vines for two weeks ripe and they still don't rot. This gets you back to the healthy, healthy way of growing, okay? December of 99, I spent $21,120 heating 55 greenhouses. And that was the last month I did it. I said, I'll never do that again. And this is, I got on this road of learning how to grow in these containers, how to grow food without using heat to keep these tomato plants from dying in 16 degree weather. We got our buckets sitting on the ground, okay? We've got two tomato plants right here about this tall. We put a little water up here like into this and put a little cloth down over this plastic, used plastic, it's about three foot long, just droop it down over this. Then we take another half inch PVC, we put a rod in the ground over here and a rod over here, and we put this PVC bend it out there and put it on them two rods, and put a bigger piece of plastic over that. One layer, two layers, your house is a third layer. Every layer is worth eight degrees. Three H is 24. 16 degrees outside, you add 24 to it, 40. And the coldest I ever caught it in these buckets were 42 degrees at the soil level. We do not grow tomatoes, peppers, okra, green beans, and squash in the wintertime. We grow lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower, Swiss chard, radishes, green onions, new potatoes. That's where we can teach you how to grow food. You can't afford to, to heat them anymore. It costs too much. And this is the reason we're doing all this, is to teach people how to grow this food without heat and what you can grow in the wintertime, what you grow in the spring. 